Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right. <clears throat> so, talk, topic of the town is Austin Reeves of the L.A. Lakers. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm listening to the national media guys. Now they're on board. And it's tricky because now they're going to try to they're going to they're going to try to use the narrative process. There, there are narratives that are going to be created around our young player here, Laker Nation. And we're going to have more to deal with. And it's not something that should be surprising to anybody. It really shouldn't. Uh, Austin Reeves is a white American player who's starting to pop. Who really looks like he could step out and start him in the biggest market in the league. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those situations where people are going to love him and hate him for the wrong reasons. And then it's going to try to they're going to try to drown out the people who just know the game and know his game. You know, it's it's, it's about to be a hype machine surrounding our guy. Uh, that's going to even it's going to it's going to overpower the Caruso hype, in my opinion. It's going to get crazy over here. I'm, I'm excited about it, but I don't want it to distract or mess with the chemistry of the team or mess with Austin's game or confidence in any way. That's my thinking. You know, the, the media will build you up to drop you down. And they're already ready to do that with him. You know what I mean? They, they're already ready to, to roll out the Jeremy Lin red carpet for him. They're setting it up so that people hate him for, for the reasons that we saw over the last couple of games. He gets to the line, he gets calls that everybody else doesn't get. That's not happenstance. They're trying to create that type of thing where they are now looking at him and saying, oh, He's overhyped, and then here comes the hate after that. Oh, you know, and all that extra stuff. And then you got the people who are going to love him. Oh, he's the greatest thing ever. Just for them to be so disappointed when he makes a mistake. <clears throat> we got to guard against that, man. We got to guard against that. LeBron James is raised in that world, and he knows more about it than anybody else. My hope is that LeBron James helps him navigate through this uh, as best as possible so we can stay focused. Because I, like I said earlier in the video that I made, uh, one of the Lakers chat videos, I made several, but I think that the best thing Austin uh, can do is to continue to doing the same thing he's been doing. <clears throat> if he gets more minutes, it's just going to equal in more production anyway. I don't think anybody at Laker Nation is surprised to see Austin do more with more minutes. We've been calling for him to have this type of role all season long. Um, has he exceeded our expectations? I honestly don't think so. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. And listening to most of Laker Nation and, and, and listening to the conversations that have been had and even remember some of the conversations I've had on this channel, we all expected Austin to be exactly what he is right now. Uh, he's always been able to facilitate very, very well. We knew that he could make the pass. He's always been one of the smartest players on the floor from out the gate. And his shooting percentages have skyrocketed from what we expected him to be when we drafted him. We already knew he could pass. We already knew he could play make. We already knew he was going to be chasing offensive rebounds flying out of nowhere. We already knew he draws fouls better than everybody, just basically everybody. And, and it's one of those situations where it's like, this has been one of the best players on our team since we drafted him, or rather since we found him. Like, we didn't even draft him. And so, for me, I'm happy that he's finally being empowered uh, to just have the minutes. And then from there comes the inevitable wave <clears throat> that the media will go on to do everything but objectively uh, assess our player, man. And so I just hate that for him. <clears throat> I hate that for him, but I love that for him just the same because he has an opportunity to make a whole lot of money, a whole lot of money on and off the court. But at the same time, I think this kid is a gamer, man. I think he wants to be in a position to just hoop. <laughs> you know, he's a real hooper. I, I get that feeling. I don't think he's chasing the other stuff. I don't think he necessarily wants the superstar attention. If it comes to down to it, I think he may enjoy it. Uh, but I don't know if that's what he's looking for when he's out there. I think he's really looking to play the game the right way. He's looking to help the team win. He's looking to help with a unit uh, succeed in its goal. And I think I honestly believe that he's kind of taking steps forward and driving at the rim because he knows that that's missing from, from our team with LeBron being out. With Russell now being on another squad, I think the young fella is just kind of looking at a need and is feeling it. I don't know how much credit I should give to Darvin. You know what I mean? Obviously, you want to give credit to the coach for telling the, the, the players what to do and putting them in positions to have concise roles. 
And I think that he's done a good job with Darvin's with uh, with Austin's role off the bench throughout the, all the season, all season long. Or, you know, he's played well in the system. Uh, and, and that's the thing I wanted to know, you know, early on when I was assessing the whole thing that we had going with our team. I didn't think Austin and uh, Darvin was really using Austin correctly. And I was concerned that it wasn't going to work out. <clears throat> I thought he was going to mischaracterize Austin and then not give him minutes and all that kind of nonsense. But I think that that it didn't take long for Austin to, to, to shake all that off. It doesn't take Austin very long to for people to 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 you know, understand that, that they should trust him. And so that's that's really what it comes down to. I mean, it took all of one game for the new guys to, to understand that Austin's somebody they could trust on this team. And so Braun, same thing. It didn't take long. It's, I think that that's really what it is. I think he's a smart enough guy to navigate the bright lights and the fog and all the glitz and gam- glamour. He comes off as a humble kid who's prepared um, – to just continue to, to keep his eye on the basketball. And that, I think, will lead him to the highest heights and will help him f- uh, fend off the Jeremy Lin comparisons and all that other stuff that comes with with just being a white basketball player. And that's, that's what I'm saying to you guys. I think that that hype in the past, the way that I grew up and was raised, I was raised to believe that, you know, there was always a desire to have a white player in the NBA lead the fold. It was just the world we were in at a time. We thought, you know, that before the European wave came in, it seemed to me that it was just a league full of black players that were dominating and always a desire for the media to find that what we would call the great white hope. And that was something that was almost like resentful in the household growing up because it was like there was always a disadvantage for black people in other areas to where we finally got something that we could dominate. And they're always looking for someone that could come in here and just say, see, this white guy can do what the brothers can do. And because of it, we want to lead, you know, rise him up to, to glory and all of that. And so as I fast forward and I look at the situation, I say, I don't really care for that narrative. In fact, now that I've grown older and have my own point of view, while I still see that could be a need for some, I think more so what that ends up being in present times it has an inverse effect on the player. I don't think Austin Reeves is looking to be hyped up in any way for his skin color or anything else like that. But I think because of the overall environment for which that could be the mindset of a lot of people my age who are my, who are like me, who were raised in that world, where we were waiting for something like this to finally happen in a resentful way, to where we fast forward, to where we see players. We, it's been so long, and I'm going to say this from, from a real place. It's been so long since we've seen an American white player that blows our socks off. You know, a lot of them are really good, but they don't they don't blow us away like Larry Bird. You know what I mean? And so like Steve Nash, like that's that's what I'm saying. And this kid, this kid is somebody who it looks like the intangibles and early on how he came out of nowhere and the way his game is set up to where he can fill up the box score in multiple areas, both sides of the floor. It's set up to where you automatically, if you're like a media person or, or a narrative creator or even a talking head like myself, you see the possibilities of this kid being able to be something greater than most of the other guys that came before him since, you know, just because of the scarcity of the players that are like him in the league today. So it's going to be a narrative creating situation where some people are going to, as I said, hype him up to make him as if he was the greatest thing to ever play and not assess his game right at all in that way. And it's going to be people who hate him because of the overall environment that I just described that a lot of people probably still harbor. It's like, oh, man, here they go. It's that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Here they go. They're going to try to prop up the white dude. And so it, because of those two very, very extreme just narratives, so to speak, I just... I just want to guard against that as, as somebody who's appreciating the player, as, as someone who's appreciating our team and how the team's running with him on the, on the floor. I don't want to cater to that. I wanted to bring this to the table, let y'all know how I thought and think, and then proceed to let you guys know that I want to guard against that in every way, shape, and form. 
because I think that if a baller is a baller, he's a baller. And I would love for an environment to be, no matter what his color is or whatever, if he can contribute to the team, let's assess him like we would assess everybody else and train ourselves to look at everybody the same way if possible. If possible. And it may not be possible. Everybody has their fan favorites. And maybe those reasons may be merited. And maybe those reasons may be ethnically, you know, driven. But the idea that we're supposed to love or hate somebody because of that, I just think it's something that we need to guard against. I think we really need to guard against that. I think we need to appreciate Austin Reeves, but we need to guard against the build-up to tear down nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And so I've seen it too many times. I've seen it to where guys get so far up in the cosmos with the hype and the first thing they do with an injury, a couple of injuries, all of a sudden the media's bashing them, saying they're not as good. Or, and I just know better. I would say keep balance, Austin. You know what I mean? Keep balance. These people do not love you. Not like that. They love what you can do for them. They love the way you look. They hate the way you look. You know, that kind of thing. But it ain't real. It ain't backed by your merit. It ain't backed by your character, man. You just got to keep on, keep on being a student of the game. And, and that's what's going to carry you forward, man. Because I don't think any of this hype is, 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 is as real as his actual ability. See, that's what's, that's what's going to kick their butts. I got a lot of respect for Jeremy Lin. But he, he wasn't Austin Reeves. He wasn't Austin Reeves. Jeremy Lin was a fantastic player. who could do a lot of things. But Austin Reeves is the real deal. Length, defensive prowess. Uh, Jeremy Lin was a turnover machine. That's not Austin Reeves. It's a lot of stuff that we know as Laker fans because we had Jeremy Lin for two years. He was a point guard for two years. So we know him very well. So they can't really run that game on us, um, which I really appreciate because I've been listening to a lot of comparisons. Oh, he's Jeremy Lin, and I've been immediately able to just let people know that I watch him every night, and he's, I've watched both of them at length. No, no, he's not Jeremy. So that's, 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 that's a real false positive. They don't even compare in any way. Um, and so to, for me, it's like, look, I hear people compare. My comparison for, for him was Josh Giddy, the guy that he was drafted with. Um, you know what I mean? Same, same. Well, I keep saying drafted, but it was the same class. Giddy was a lottery pick. He was undrafted. But, the, you know, I studied them the same day, discovered their game and studied them the same day. And so I'm like, oh, these two dudes are just alike. It's just that Giddy had a little more flair to his game, a little more natural flow and natural like god-given gift you know what i mean but austin's intangibles and his length and his his ability to to think the game and and execute what he what he does um and in that day i didn't think he could shoot that well so i'm like it's a little more you know if they're close but now at this point i'm not sure austin's not better than josh because he's a much better shooter than josh giddy you know what i mean so josh is a big guy and like i said the intangibles and the smoothness of josh game he has some stuff that you, you cannot teach. But Austin's one of those guys where his basketball IQ is in the cosmos, man. <laughs> and as he continues to get older and, 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 and grows into the game, I think he could also be somebody who, after the game, you know, after he finished playing, he's probably going to go straight into coaching or straight into teaching the game. You know, he's one of those type of dudes. So it's like I already know that, that this, is, this is a guy who, if his body serves him well, um, his mind is going to carry him forward. Like, I don't I don't really doubt Austin. It's just about what he's going to be able to do over time, just like anybody else who's really gifted at this game. Honest to God, that's what I really think. And when you start considering what he'll be able to do in terms of all stars, I think the problem with the era that we're in and the era that we're entering in regards to asking for all star appearances and stuff like that is just just not enough spaces for the talent that deserves to be there from year to year. When you consider injuries and and the fact that they want to make up four injuries and stuff like that giving guys legacy spots on the all-star game a guy can deserve to be an all-star seven years in a row and never make it i've seen it with my own eyes so i don't want to do that you know making an all-star team is as good as being good as being lucky to be playing well at a certain time many a guy who earned a chance to be an all-star after the all-star game you know and there was never a way to really give those guys their props but they did most of the damage that they did you know, in the second half of the season. And so these type of things are like, because I know that, I would never say that I think Austin Reeves is going to actually make an all-star team because I just don't think that's within his, his control unless unless he ascends to a level that I don't believe he can reach. I don't. But I don't think that because of his skill set. I just think that because he's going to be capped off by athletes in this league. The guys are like, you know, Giannis's and Zion's and Jalen's. It's, it's only so many spots. 
So with those dudes and their athleticism is going to carry them to a lot of stats. And because of it, it's going to be tough to see Austin Reeves starting an all-star game or, or be in a reserve if he doesn't have some spectacular season where the team is number one and he's, he's the leading guy in it. So I don't know if he'll ever be an all-star. But what I can say is he's good enough to reach all-star status as soon as his body will allow him to take on low. You give him 40 minutes a game as a starting shooting guard for five years, he's going to make an all-star team eventually. That's what I'm telling you. But it's going to be about how well you can build a team and, of course, how well that team can win. He will contribute to that in a lot of areas. And so that's, that's what it is, man. I don't doubt Austin Reeves. His skill set has always translated well to this league. His skill set has always been complete, basically. And the only question he had was whether or not he could shoot. He's shooting above 40%. So as far as I could tell, the only thing in the way of him being the most approved player is the fact that we didn't start him all year. That's it. If he would have been the starting shooting guard from the beginning of the year and stayed healthy all year long, I think he'd be in running for most improved. I think for, uh, per, bin, per minute, he's been showing us that for a while. And the minutes just hadn't really come. Uh, he, but, you know, at the same time, it's like Laker fans who watch him night to night know he's not a perfect player. We know he still has developing to do. And that's the important part. That's the important part. We don't want to Jordan pool him, give him one hundred thirty million dollars and then proceed or, or THT him, give him a contract that we can't afford and proceed to still watch him develop. Austin Reed much must continue his process. Now, he is a four year college player, which really does play into all of that. He's had four years to get his game right collegially and then proceeded to make his pro game real, which is why I think he's so dang good this dang soon. It's actually more like year five when you really consider what other guys are doing in comparison coming out one and done. So that's to be taken seriously. But at the same time, it's like he's taking care of himself. He's still he's very young and his smarts are carrying him forward to to new heights and and the size is there so that's what i really like about austin reeves you know he's he's been blessed with the height and the length to allow him to not ever need to be removed from the floor you think about certain other players that are really really good in this league but they just can't be seen as all the time players because it's a small ball lineup if they're down there you know and it's unfortunate very poor very good players but they did you know they're just not going to be able to be on the floor like austin will be able to so that's something that we also appreciate having him in our, on our roster. It's like we can slot him at the three, slot him at the two. Obviously play him some one. And if you really want to go small ball, you could probably get away with him, put him at the four. You really could, depending on the matchup, especially if the other team is going small, putting a small forward or shooting guard at their four. He could play that easy. So this is a situation, especially given the way he rebounds. Yeah, I like that. And as everybody else has been saying, and I think I may have mentioned it today as well, he really does take some punishment. That's one running theme that, that is not phony at all, even though he's known for drawing fouls in, in a modern-day way. <laughs> you know what I mean? He does what he needs to do to make sure you know that he's been fouled. But at the same time, he also takes on a lot of punishment, so you don't think he's cheating the game. He ain't cheating it. You see him taking black eyes and bloody nose and all that stuff. He takes the contact to go along with what he has to do to allow you to know he's been been hit and, and look we know in this league if you don't sell it they won't call it if you don't sell it they won't call it it took a long time for me to respect that because i would see guys go out there and flop all over the place sometimes it would look so ridiculous but then you would once in a while you would see a guy who would not flop literally at all he would get hit so hard he would just bull through it and they won't call it you see him get smacked in his head. He don't complain. He run down. And it's like, that's what you want. Except for the fact that we literally just got cheated out of his head in the head. So maybe he should have draw, you know, dropped to the floor and held his head for three seconds. At least that would have shown them that, you know, they probably should whistle it or it's going to be reviewed a billion times. So that's kind of why flopping is necessary. It's not just about um, being ridiculous. It's about selling the foul and letting the officials know demonstratively while they're looking at a million different things at the same time that you have been hit and that the contact should be called. So that's why it's so that's why it looks like such bad acting. It took me a long time to understand that, y'all. A <laughs> long time. But I get it now. Um, and, and at the right time. So I could tell y'all about our player, Austin Reeves, who's going to do that. And he's going to help us a lot doing it. And, it was, and, and the many players came before him did it, too. He ain't the first one, obviously. Uh, so, you know, we, we want to see Austin Reeves get a fair shot. 
And anytime the hype gets too crazy, I automatically want to remind people that that is only meant to drop you just as fast, man. It ain't meant to exalt you or make you nothing. It's just meant to pile the pile the pressure on. And the higher levels you reach, the hotter the hate gets. Ask LeBron. That's the highest level. So that's really what it is, man. I'm, I'm To say I'm excited about Austin Reeves is silly, man. If you've been following me, I've been screaming his praises since the first day. Very first day. Made a whole video on him the very first day. Just, I already know. I already knew. And I saw this aspect coming, too. And now this is going to be one of the toughest parts. Because this is the brand new part of stardom. So what he's going to have to do is humble himself, navigate through it, continue to perform, find ways of dealing with the pressure without trying to do too much uh, while still stepping forward. And that balance is tough for young players, but I think he's, he's built for it, man. This guy's built for it. He's built for it. He's humble just the right way so that everybody can respect him. Man, he ain't no punk. You know what I mean? He, he let Green know how he felt about him, too. So that, that should let people know where he's going to be mentally in the playoffs and, and what they're going to have to deal with, dealing with him. And that's a dynamic that I don't think many people were considering. Obviously, as a Laker fan, yeah, we're considering Austin Reeves all the time. But not at this clip. That's an entirely different weapon that we weren't really looking at as this type of weapon. So what does this mean for our prospects of in, the, in the playoffs? I don't know if we can sustain Austin Reeves playing at this level with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and D'Angelo Russell all needing the ball when he come, when they when Braun comes back but what I can say is Austin Reeves will be able to attack with even less defense than he's worried about right now because of the pressure that all those other guys are going to give him so I don't know what he's going to look like when Austin gets a chance to come you know play with Braun at this level I don't know if his numbers don't dip back to where it used to be but will still be winning and the reason why I think it could be is because he his game usually flows with others very well um so long as he's not trying to do too much again. But as long as he's himself, his game is going to flow with bronze. He's just going to be able to be such a more efficient and lethal weapon alongside Braun. Uh More so than, than the focal point of what he is right now and how he's doing it. So um, I, I like it. I like it. They're both passers. They're both capable of, of doing what they need to do to to make it make sense quickly. They already have great synergy, so I'm not worried about him. I'm, the least thing I'm worried about is Bron James and Austin Reeves stepping on each other's toes in any way. Um, I was listening to to Chris Broussard uh, on the podcast, and they were talking about, uh, you know, they were laughing about how Austin Reeves is not going to be taking the ball out of LeBron James's hands, and that's a that's a that's laughable. Nobody's having him do that. But I suggested it on this camera about four hours ago, quite literally, uh, without any sarcasm whatsoever and the reason why i think that is just because of continuity and the specifics of our circumstance and if you watch my video earlier you already know my thought on that i just don't want any changing of the guard as it pertains to who's passing the rock to affect possessions that we can't afford to go left with unforced turnovers just because guys don't know exactly where to be and how best to handle a certain possession or two when bron and, and austin are all back and everything's as it is going to be when we're at full strength, but not have enough time to find that synergy being full. So I don't know, man. I have my concerns about this team as it pertains to how we're going to handle when Braun comes back. And I kind of do want the ball to go in Austin's hands just for the sake of the continued continuity of everybody else on the team. Um, but then again, how much confident can you feel uh, not having LeBron James have full range to do the things that LeBron does? But even LeBron James is going to have to take a couple games to get back in rhythm. And we don't have those games for him to be bricking those possessions away. And I know he knows that. You know what I mean? This is not a situation where we can say, okay, Bron, you got two or three games. Just shoot a couple shots. If you happen to go five for 15, it's okay because we really can't afford it. Salute to Kobe Minute, of course. But to return to the thought, we just can't afford to have any synergy disruption. No potential synergy disruption, no temporary synergy disruption, especially with so few games left when he comes back. Now, we want to make sure that everyone knows that that three game thing is not real. We talked about that as well. But just to reiterate, there was nothing confirmed in regards to his return. We will wait accordingly. 
but he's doing what he got to do to get back on the court. So we believe that he'll probably be back before the season ends. And hopefully that means that we will be in position to still win and get into playing the tournament. Um, so that's the thought. I, I don't want people to think that LeBron James is uh, imminent to come back right away, even though I've been screaming that I think he's going to try to come back sooner. We don't know nothing like that. Um, so that's that's the end of the story there. So, yeah, doubling back to Austin, man. We're going to continue to, to lean on Austin, and I expect Anthony Davis to respond. I do want Anthony Davis to step forward and be the best player on this floor. Because I like what Austin's doing, and Austin's doing what he has to do. Because Anthony ain't doing enough. And it ain't, hey, look, Anthony had a great game in the last game. So we're not talking about just that game and then proceeding to get on Anthony's case. No, we're still taking the fullness of the last five games or so. And we're looking at that as we speak here. It's, he just got to step forward, man. Continue to, from the momentum of the last game. Uh, give us more of that and, and try to cater to the scoring column uh, as much as the game will force you to. As long as we're winning it, let's just be real. We don't like seeing ourselves have him only have 15 points. Uh, but if, you know, if, if throughout the course of the game it makes sense for any reason and we walk away with a win, then we just got to live with that, man. You know, we got to live with that, especially if other guys are going to step forward and make it up. But we just cannot see ourselves be passive is what we're saying. You know, if the defense is, sh is shaving him away from, from, from play and we find progress elsewhere, wonderful. But what we don't want is for him to be guarded by some regular Joe and him walk out of there having not attempted enough shots or not being aggressive. And then from there, leaning on guys like Austin to go for 30 because Austin's taking step forwards now. Like, that's not the way we need to be approaching this, any of us. Um, it's just not, and, and that's, I guess, it's part of the trap to not fall into. This, this is the thought. This is not, let's showcase Austin Reeves now time because the media is excited about Austin time. No, let's act like we've been here before. Let's act like we know our player. That's what I want to say. It's just like I'm asking Austin not to do too much or too little. Let's not put the spotlight on Austin to be LeBron James, just because the media is doing that, let's do what makes sense for us. If Dennis Schroeder got it going, let keep feeding Dennis. If if this is Rui Hachimura's night, let's keep feeding Rui. Because my mindset is we don't have that type of pecking order. Maybe we should have had it, but for, for what we're used to in terms of our continuity, everybody steps forward. Anybody can shoot. Everybody's trying to look for their shot randomly. If the whole team starts looking at Austin and say, okay, this is Austin's team now, and starts overpassing to Austin, teams are going to take the ball from him. We need to respect that. He still has development to go, particularly with his ball handling. So if we ask him to do too much, just like we saw in the first quarter when he was trying to do too much, dribbling, in the, dribbling at the rim, dribbling right off his feet, he's still a developing player. So we need to make sure that we keep a good balance in regards to what we're asking him to do. And the guys on the floor with him got to act like they know him. Don't act like this is some brand new guy that's come through and, you know, inserted themselves into Austin's body and now you got to respect him differently. This is the same Austin Reeves. He just has more minutes. So let's play smart as we always have and let's not act like we are brand new around here. That's my action. That's what I have to say about that. I, I just really want to guard against that because a lot of times you'll find in situations like this, now the team think they have to pass to him in situations where they otherwise wouldn't. Now guys ain't going to, you know, I'm not going to take this open shot because I got to make sure Austin gets the ball. Nah, that's, that's not... What we need when we need to win games. What we need to do when we need to win games is take what the defense gives us, react to what exactly is happening down there, and run with the hot hand no matter who it is. If it's Austin again, he steps forward and gives us even 40 points, great. But if he doesn't have it like that and he only goes for 15 and 8, that should be fine because I need to see Schroeder getting 22 in that situation. I need uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell give me 28 in that situation. I need Anthony Davis give me 31 in that situation. And that's how we're going to roll. You feel me? Because that's how we've been getting down. That's how we've been able to get our progression, the production rather. So, you know, I just don't want us to fall into the trap. You know, if, if like I said, if Austin takes a step f even further forward, that's wonderful. But they're going to have all kinds of defenses thrown at our guy. This is what we need to understand. Because the hype train is on board, that means SGA is probably going to be thrown at him. 
You know, they're going to put their best guy on him, whoever their best defender is, Wiggins, whoever it is. They're going to throw him on Austin Reeves now. Try to take the ball from him, double teams, all that. So, again, that's a wonderful thing because now everybody's on Austin. That means Anthony's open. That means Dennis is open. That means Troy got better looks. That means Rui got better looks. That means, you know, um, Beasley should be able to get better looks. That's all that means. D'Lo, less defense on you. They're focused on Austin. They're treating him like he's Bron. Perfect. Use Austin as a decoy. This is how we have to win these games. That's how we have to win them. We don't want to fall into the narratives of, of the media. Don't even pay them dudes no attention. Because they ain't paying the close attention to the team to know what the hell anyway. You feel me? They don't, they don't know. They don't know the type of games we've had. They don't, know, <laughs> they don't remember the Philly game and the Indy game and the Boston game and the Charlotte games. They don't remember none of that. We know who we are. So as we go into these games with our playoff lives on the line, let's think about all them games that we had that we lost that we didn't like. And let's continue to be hungry about it, continue to fight, continue to have fun. But do so while being intent on winning, man. Do so while being intent on ignoring and blocking out the noise. Block out the noise, Austin. That's the best thing you can do for yourself, man. Block out the noise. Do not let these people... Hype you up and then tear you down. You know who you are before they start talking. So know who they are when they done talking. That's what I got to say. BDL44, I think you are. Thank you all for watching. And I'm out.